So somewhere near the, the beginning of, of lockdown one, uh, maybe a couple of weeks in, um, I decided to, to buy a, a telescope. I had a telescope when I was a boy, and I'd always kind of wanted one. And because, uh, you know, the, the light pollution uh, was less and the air pollution was less, I thought, this is a good time uh, to get a telescope and I'll finally be able to see the little dot of Jupiter in clarity. I'll be able to see that little uh, storm, you know, the spot that's on Jupiter. And I'll be able to see the rings uh, of Saturn. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have four million pounds to buy the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, I only had a few quid. Uh, so I did uh, what I could. And uh, so I bought um, a telescope and it did give me excellent views of the moon. Fantastic. You could see all the craters close up. It reduced some of the light around it, so it got a really clear view of the moon. Uh, but then, um, then Icarus, so to speak, flew too close to the sun. Uh, I tried to, to focus on Jupiter, and it turned a, a small uh, white dot into a very clearly defined smaller white dot. I couldn't get any detail on Jupiter, so I was a bit disappointed. I tried again with Saturn. I thought, oh, at least I'll be able to see uh, some rings nothing doing. Um, maybe I need to reinvest at some other point. But one thing uh, which did uh, amaze me, which blew me away, was when I looked at Jupiter through my telescope, I noticed two really, really faint small dots beside Jupiter. I found, well I hadn't found, but I'd seen for the first time with my eye two of the moons of Jupiter. And that blew me away. Because never with my naked eye would it have been possible, particularly in London, to see the two moons of Jupiter. Sometimes we need something or someone to give us a clearer focus to help us to see what is really out there, what is really going on in the world, in the universe, and in ourselves. John the Baptist is just such a person for us. And that's why he appears to us this week in the gospel. And I'm fascinated by how he appeared. It says, and so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He appeared in the wilderness. Now, I imagine that it was common knowledge that John the Baptist was in the desert for many, many years. He was the cousin of Jesus, the son of Elizabeth and Zechariah. Uh, he couldn't have just disappeared from home. My mum was just going out to buy the milk and not come back for 20 years and nobody know where he is. The wilderness was probably only about half a mile uh, from the township. But he was on his own, being ignored largely for how many years? Perhaps 20. He was in that wilderness contemplating the one who was to come contemplating the Messiah, the Christ. And it took many, many years for people to see him. And that is why he appeared. The same way you look up at a dark sky in London, you know, which is full of light pollution. If you look long enough, like I looked long enough in my telescope, you'll start to see other stars appear. Were they not there and all of a sudden our eye, sort of they appeared to our eye? No, they were always there. What changed was our eyes' attunement, its capacity to see. John the Baptist was preaching and contemplating the Christ for many, many years, and people did not hear him or see him. When the time was right, John appeared to the people around him, and he baptized them for the repentance of their sins, they could begin to prepare for the Christ. John required patience. And if we are to see Christ acting in our lives, in the many and various ways that he does, we also need patience, but also the resilience and the will to keep on looking when nothing seems to appear to look up to that dark sky and trust that there are stars in it, that there are guiding lights will, that will lead the way to Jesus. And I think during this uh, long period of pandemic, what are we, nine months in now, we may have felt 
at different points along the way that sense that this is never going to end, that the sky will always remain dark. And yet here we are back in church with news of a vaccine around the corner. I think uh, actually it might be starting uh, next week to be distributed. And we can begin to look towards a light on the horizon, a one which didn't appear. You know, for many of us, we've survived. Some haven't. But we are still here as Christians, adoring the Lord, proclaiming his message. But we need to carry that message forward. We are called to be the light in someone else's darkness. Someone who is being looked for to be the presence of Christ as John the Baptist was the presence of Christ before Christ came to them. Now, I do read a bit of astronomy every now and then, and um, there's this, uh, this uh, writer, is a Jesuit monk, uh, who writes in a magazine I read called The Tablet. His name is Guy Consolmagno, and, um, and he's an astronomer, and he says that uh, if you type into Google uh, Christmas star, uh, you'll find 50 million uh, different matches. People are very interested in the star, aren't they, that led the, the Magi to Jesus. One theory nobody knows as to what that sight in the sky could have been um, 2,000 years ago is the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. So Jupiter appears quite brightly in the sky, Saturn less so, but every so often they cross as they orbit the sun and we see it in the sky. And guess when it happens this year? The 21st of December, the darkest night before things start to brighten up and lead us to Christmas. Who's to say that that appearance in the sky, that co co coincidental conjunction of planets, wasn't providential? We may be providential for others, for others who are looking for Christ, though they don't know it, in their desperate need. Whatever faculty we have, we can be the light that comes into someone's life at any point. The only thing that we need do with confidence and faith, like John the Baptist, is to keep shining. Amen.